Good morning everybody, all twos and fews of you. Welcome to the channel where we try to stay positive and try to pray for each other and uh, try to uh, keep our eyes focused on the spirit more than the flesh. Food shortages coming up. I'm not going to get off to a big long tangent about do you believe it's coming or not or it's inedible that it's coming or it's not that type of thing. We're going to pray for these food shortages. Uh, news channels and, and uh, presidents of countries are now talking about it. In the beginning, it was just, uh, it was just conspiracy theory. Now it's turning out to be a very real reality. Uh, food shortages, uh, along with uh, gas prices, seem to be a wild ride for the flesh and probably even wilder for the spirit. And it's going to be many challenges to a lot of us. Uh, with that being said, Let's focus on the uh, the good news, which is uh, Jesus Christ has came and paid the price. If we were to be the ones that uh, perished in the food shortages or, or a famine, where would your soul be? Would you be happy where your soul is now? If you're not on board with uh, the price that Jesus paid on that cross, I strongly suggest that you get on board. It's the good news of the world. It's the best news the world ever had. And it's free. It doesn't cost anything to take up with Jesus Christ and uh, make sure that your soul's in, in good shape. So if you're a young uh, Christian out there that hadn't been thinking much about uh, God, and I know, honestly, people, most people don't really think a lot about God during the day. That's usually for old people getting close to dying or or when your mother and daddy starts dying and you want to pray to, to save them. This is usually when people start coming to God in prayer. Times of trouble. Uh, we need to come to God and when times are good. Because we can make trouble times good if we only focus on the good news. If we only focus on what's important. And that is Jesus Christ, God's Savior. One and only Savior. He came to this world. In the flesh, God came in the flesh, paid for our sins. God, you would be too tough for us to come out on our own off of this rock and join back with him for the crimes that we committed in the age before this one. He knew it was too tough. So if we're going to if we're gonna make it out of here with any tail feathers, we better get on the Jesus train, so to speak, and we better, we better start thinking of godly things. We better help this movement spread. The movement of the good news in Christ of the Gospels, this is all a movement. And we have to help that movement uh, perpetuate and move from one conductor to the next. Conductor, like in, speaking of in terms of electricity components, of which is a great hobby of mine. You ever notice electrical components, when they were coming up with these things, they had to name them things that, that reminded them or, or modeled after things in our lives. you got capacitors, you got... Uh, uh, like you ever uh, say, uh, if you want to capacitate somebody in something, you got resistors. So if you're trying to resist something, uh, like people resisted the church for years and years, you got transformers, which uh, we uh, spirituality has transformed souls and peoples for so long. There's a likeness in these words, and that goes all through life. Words make perfect sense if we don't mess with them and try to change them to fit our lustful needs, like. Uh, so many words have been in the world, like say gay for one. Gay used to mean just kind of like happy and uh, carefree. Uh, now it has a whole different meaning with a, a, a set of uh, people on the planet. And uh, so you, you can't just like change words to make, them, uh, to make them conform. Words are like math and they make perfect sense uh, if you let it. That being said... Starvation, famine, and all those things uh, looks like we're pretty close to that type of thing. Don't fear that. Don't be uh, filled with trepidation. Don't be filled with anxiety. Uh, don't fear. Uh, we're losing the bodies anyway. I mean, we're born with that burden. We're born with that price. The wages of sin are death. And uh, there was great sin in the cattle bow. And so there's we're born into this world uh, knowing the uncertainty uh, certainty of death. It's coming. We know this. And that, in that sense, nothing has really changed. We've always known that our death was coming. Uh, we've always had a, 
Uh, we always need to feel a great sense of urgency to take care of our souls and get our souls on the Jesus train. That ticket has been paid. It's the only ticket you're going to find. Don't wait for a great act of self-preservation that's going to get you out of the trouble we're in. It ain't going to happen. The price is too high. The price is uh, to be paid uh, for our sins is, is just too high. you got to let Jesus pay for those sins. And you got to take him into your heart. you got to let him transform you. you got to be a good conductor. Chad, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick you off the porch. You got to be a good conductor of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. You got to stop resisting the uh, movement that is Christ. And you have to capacitate others to do the same thing. Now I'm talking about it like components of radio. You see how that works? Uh, the Word of uh, God works the same way. Uh, there's a lot of things in there, words that when you first read them may not make a lot of sense. And as you start thinking about the, uh, the science of the words, and the likenesses that the Bible has laid out for us, uh, it starts to make a lot of sense. It really does. With that being said, let's go straight to the throne. And let's pray about the situation of uh, starvation and uh, famine and uh, those types of things that we're on the cusp of. Dear Father in heaven, help us in these times, Father. <clears throat> Give us... Give us the, uh, the former and latter reigns, Father, concerning what's about to take place on this world. Help us understand the parts that we have to understand, Father. That we can take care of our spirits and our flesh and protect them from this great you know, famine that's coming as best we can, Father. Give us the common sense and the spirit that we need to accept the uh, changes that are taking place. Reform us, Father, from the things that caused this famine to take place and reform us in to more the image of you, Father, and how you created us for us to end up to be. Give us the love, the strength, and the wisdom that it takes to get through this thing and uh, make it through without... Uh, without... Uh, too much distress. Help us, quicken us, Father, to catch up to where we need to be in this plan. Help us understand that uh, what's about to take place is just and good. Uh, give us the strength not to just see what's happening with our flesh eyes, but with our spiritual eyes too. Uh, stay with us, Father, every day in our decisions and, uh, and, and help us make the right decisions concerning us concerning our friends and our families, that we can uh, that we can get through this thing and that we can uh, get through it as you would have us get through it, as a, uh, as a responsive, uh, 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 a responsive, deserving child of you, Father. Help us become better children of God every day, day by day. Forgive us for the times, Father when we act like we don't love you and need you, Father, because we truly do love you and need you every day, day by day. Now, give us the uh, give us the flesh food for our bodies during this time, but more importantly than that, Father, give us spiritual food for our souls that we can transform into something better than what we are today. We love you, Father. We need you, Father. Father, we believe. And most of you that prayed with me on these prayers know that I like to close out my prayers with we believe. It's basically what amen means. Now, if you've got anything from this video, if, uh, if the Spirit hits you in a good fashion, then uh, help us by hitting that uh, that like button. That's uh, right below the screen, probably about there somewhere. There's a little button that says like, or a little thumbs up, or a little thumbs down. If you didn't like it, for whatever the reason, don't agree with you hit the thumbs down and leave me a comment tell me why and then uh, if you did like it hit that like button uh, and if you want to leave a comment uh, even if it's criticism I like to hear from people uh, I also like to discuss things with people edification is one of the best things that our father has ever given us now, the internet is a great place for edification it's a great place to talk to people you know Jesus said concerning his miracles that someday we would do greater things than that and I firmly believe that has to do 
with uh, the internet. You say, think about it. You can get on this YouTube and you can say something in uh, southern Mississippi and somebody in, I don't know, France or somewhere far across the world may be listening at that someday. And, and that spirit may be traveling one conductor to another conductor. That's a great and powerful thing. So uh, we never know what's going to happen with the internet. I know there's not a lot of numbers on these videos now, but the time is coming where people may start to be looking for prayer videos. And uh, they may grow. And who can say? The seed's being planted, and that's the main thing. Well, that being said, good news, people. Christ has come. The price is paid. We don't need to be miserable. You can have your Jesus now. You can have your Jesus and eat it too. You don't have to wait for Jesus to come on your deathbed. You don't have to wait to die. You can have Jesus every day of your life. And that's really the good news. We don't have to be miserable on this rock until the coming uh, second coming of Christ. You can have your second coming right now. Just think about it. Once you accept Christ, He came to you in your heart. He's willing to help you. He's willing to change you. That's a good thing. That is the good news. So if you're sitting there sad, lonely, or depressed, or whatever problem ails you, the day don't have to be like that. Let him in now, won't you? If you haven't already taken Christ in, taking him side, let him reconform your life. You'll be glad you did. With that being said, I'll see you tomorrow.